Welcome back to another episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. Today, I'm going to make a very special thing. I decided to bake some cookies for my future wife. Smash like if you've ever baked cookies for your future wife. Do you have a future wife? Well, this is going to be fun. I'm excited, okay? Now, the first thing I want to mention is that here in Canada, where I am now, I'm a Canadian, in case you didn't know, here in Canada, we use the metric system, right? So, you know, if you buy something, let's say you buy a jug of milk, right? See, it says four liters, four liters of milk, okay? Now, why do we use liters? Well, because that's what we use in Canada. If you were to buy this jug of milk in the U.S., it would be one gallon. Okay, it would be... I hear a loud plane flying over my house. Welcome to Mad English TV, where planes always ruin my videos. All right, so if you buy this jug of milk in the U.S., it would be a gallon. It would be a slightly different measurement. It would be, I think a gallon is a little bit more than four liters. Don't quote me on that. Maybe it's a bit less. I can't remember. Okay, but here in Canada, we use, we use liters. But when it comes to certain things, especially baking and cooking, we use the imperial system. Okay, so we use the same system as the U.S. when it comes to baking and cooking. For example, if I turn on my oven, right, here's my oven. What do you think is going to, is it, what's, what's it going to say? How is it going to measure the temperature? Look at this. I press bake. Right there, it says 350 Fahrenheit. Right, 350 Fahrenheit. It doesn't have Celsius. I don't think my oven... Now my oven is beeping. Let's, uh, let's preheat the oven. All right, so I'm just going to press start. There, now it's preheating, right? Very often recipes will say, you can hear it just switched on, right? It's my oven. All right, let's get to warm up my kitchen here because actually today is cold. It's freezing. It's minus 20 degrees, but with wind chill, it's about, it feels like about minus 30 out there. I went outside to check my mail. It's, it's freezing out there. So stay warm, my friends. It's really cold here in Canada. So if you go outside, you'll see it's Celsius. Like if you pull up the app on your phone and check the weather, it'll say outside here in Calgary, it's minus 20 Celsius. But if you turn on your oven, now it might be possible to switch this to Celsius. I'm not sure, I haven't read the manual. I never read the manual. You know when you buy something new, like a product or anything, do you, do you ever read the manual? <laughs> I never read the manual. I just just use it the way it is and try to figure it out. So this just this this oven, the default setting is in Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's that's how it is in Fahrenheit. And when you cook with things, like, like when you follow a recipe, it will say, uh, you know, add a teaspoon of salt. Okay, look, there's a teaspoon, right? This big one is a tablespoon, right? So teaspoons, tablespoons, cups, right? Look at this, a cup. Your recipe might say add a cup of sugar or add a cup of milk. Well, look at that. It says one cup or 240 milliliters. Okay, so it does give the milliliter on this one, but a recipe will never say, you know, put in 240 milliliters of milk it'll say add a cup of milk okay so that's one thing to know about about you know cooking here in Canada is is we use the imperial system all these kinds of measurements at least for the most part there might be some you know recipes that will use grams or milliliters or like the metric the metric system but for the most part that's what you got to get used to. You might be from a country that, you know, measures everything in, in, in milliliters and grams and, and that, but that might be new for you. So we use, we kind of copy the American system. I mean, most recipes, if you, if you go on Google and you search for, you know, how to bake cookies, most of the recipes are going to be, like most of the recipes come from the U.S. probably, American 
cooks come up with the recipe and they use it so we just use it here very often that's how it is in Canada we copy them and for other things too like for measuring height and weight if you ask a Canadian you go on the street if you ask someone like me how mark how much do you weigh I'll give you my weight in pounds not kilograms or how tall are you mark I'll give you my my height in in feet and inches not in meters or centimeters okay so that's something to know now another thing to know is that when you bake stuff very often there are dry ingredients and wet ingredients all right so uh, ingredient like milk or butter or eggs right those are those are wet ingredients now dry ingredients are ingredients like flour right we got some flour here um, baking powder right uh, salt sugar now very often you actually end up adding sugar into the wet ingredients so let's start by let's just start this recipe enough yapping away from me you didn't tune into this video to listen to me yap away yap away means to just to talk a lot right you can say mark stop yapping away get down to the recipe okay so let's add you know what let's start by adding some sugar all right so look at that here we got we got some granulated sugar look at that it says special fine granulated now what does the word granulated mean granulated means little grains right little grains of sugar um, so I'll show you here let's open up this package uh, and I will show you what granulated sugar looks like I don't know if you can see it but it's like you can see those grains right now these are small pretty small grains pretty fine grains so that's what granulated means now that is a bit different than this stuff here so this is icing sugar or powdered sugar look how fine that is I mean that's a powder right so this is not granulated this is this is powdered sugar icing sugar for making icing okay so this is the granulated sugar so let's start by adding how much sugar should we add let's go with uh can't even get my spoon in here guys let me just dump it in I'll just try to dump it <laughs> right. I have a feeling this is gonna be an interesting recipe okay so let's add uh, how many cups of sugar should we add should we do you have a sweet tooth if you have a sweet tooth that means you like eating sweet things like desserts let me know in the comments if you have a sweet tooth I have a sweet tooth so let's start by adding let's add two cups of sugar my first cup was overflowing a little bit let's uh, yeah let's add two cups of sugar now let's add um, let's add one cup of butter okay so this is butter usually comes in a packet like a package this size right now it says 250 what is that grams 250 grams but on the back usually of a of a stick of butter like this it will tell you how much it is so you can see there it says half a cup so half of this is half a cup and then there's a quarter cup and a quarter cup so one half plus one quarter plus one quarter is a full cup so let's add a cup of butter or one one packet of butter here at that the wrapper kind of stuck on there come on okay you know what actually let's cut this up a little bit it's uh I just took it out of the fridge so it's a bit cold so it's not gonna blend very well when we when we beat it just see a little green thing a little green grain of sugar I don't know how that got in there okay so let's um let's cut it up let me just grab a knife okay got my golden knife here let's cut it up into some smaller pieces did you hear my oven it means it's finished preheating when it beeps all right let's add some of this butter in there 
What do you think? Do you think this recipe is going to turn out? Or am I going to butcher it? But to butcher something means you, you ruin it. You know, it's just not a good job. So if I butcher this recipe, that means our cookies will not turn out. Right? If your recipe turns out, that means it, it ended up being really good. Hope you don't give me a thumbs down for butchering this if I butcher it. Okay, so to butcher a recipe is the opposite of having it turn out. So I'm hoping this recipe turns out really well. Okay, that means it's going to be a success. We're just chopping our butter up here. Now you can buy two kinds of butter. You can buy salted butter or unsalted butter. Um, so this is, this is unsalted butter. I usually buy, I like to buy unsalted butter. Look at that. You can see on the on the, um, the packet here, it says uh, unsalted butter. Mmm. I love the taste of butter. All right. So we got that in there, guys. Uh, should we add some eggs? How many eggs should we add? Maybe we should beat it up a little bit. Let's get this mixed in here before we add some other ingredients. So you're going to need some beaters. These are called beaters, all right? Look at that. Ooh, the cord's not long enough. Let me duck under here. All right, let's beat this up a bit. Guys, the butter's too cold. Butter's trying to escape on me. It's a bit too cold, guys. It's not beating very well. That's not working. Let's add some, uh, let's add some eggs. How many eggs should we add? Let's add three eggs. All right, this is so much fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me in my, in my endeavor, endeavor to bake cookies for my future wife. Everything's trying to escape. My eggs, my butter, hopefully my future wife doesn't try to escape from me. Let me know if you were my future wife, would you try to escape? All right, so we got some, uh, we got some liquid, a little bit of moisture in there. All right, so maybe that's gonna help it a little bit. All right, that's helping, I think. Look at that, doesn't that look great? Hey, do you ever, did, when you were a kid, did you ever like to lick the beaters after you finish your, making your recipe, whether it's like cake or cookies, you know, you take the beaters out and you lick the beaters. A lot of people love doing that. I love doing that. When I was a kid, I loved to lick the beaters. <laughs> All right, so let's keep blending this up a little bit. Let's add a couple more ingredients. What else should we add here? Um, let's add some milk. Let's add a couple tablespoons of milk. All right. Now remember the tablespoon, right? The tape, the measure tablespoon. It's it's a lot bigger than a teaspoon. It's actually three times as big as a teaspoon. Now the the way you can tell the difference is because a teaspoon the 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 acronym, or not the acronym, the abbreviation for a teaspoon is TSP. But for a tablespoon, it's TBSP. I don't know if you can read it on here. It's kind of small writing, but it says, it'll say TBSP. So let's put in two tablespoons, not teaspoons, of milk. All right, so, oh, these are called, I don't know if I, measure, if I mentioned this, these are called measuring spoons. Okay, so if you're interested in baking stuff, on a regular basis, you're going to need some 
some measuring spoons and some uh, measuring cups, right? So you'll buy like a set of measuring cups, like one cup, half a cup, quarter cup, a third of a cup. All right, so let's add our two tablespoons of milk. Ooh, isn't that gonna be amazing? What else should we add? <clears throat> Guys, let's put in some vanilla. Vanilla extract. I think I got some of the recipe on my face. Do I have some butter on my face? It feels like my face is covered in butter. Okay, so look at that vanilla extract. <sighs> Give it a little bit of flavor. So let's add one teaspoon. Ah, can't open this. Guys, we might not have to, we might have to go without. Ah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. All right, here we go. Where's our teaspoon measure? Did you hear that? My furnace just switched on. It's because it's cold. It's so cold, like I said. Out there, it's like minus 20. Feels like minus 30 with wind chill. So every few minutes, my heater in my house switches on to keep my house a little bit warm. Okay, so we're gonna add one teaspoon of Vanilla extract, or you could just call it vanilla, I think, vanilla flavoring, whatever. Now let's, um, let's beat it up a little bit more to, uh, I think that's about it for our wet ingredients, and then we're gonna start adding the dry ingredients, okay? So let's blend this up. All right, I think that's, blended enough there. Now let's add the dry ingredients. Let's add some of this. How many, uh, how many teaspoons of baking powder should we add? Let's add a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. Guys, I can't open it. I think this is brand new. I'm struggling. <laughs> Do you ever struggle when you start to Bake something. All right, we got some brand new baking powder. Ooh. Wow, that's gonna be great. Look at that baking powder right there. Aluminum free. Aluminum. British people say aluminium, or Australians too, I think they say aluminium. Here we say aluminum, okay? Let's add a couple teaspoons of baking powder level spoons. Now, sometimes a recipe will, will say level spoons or heaping spoons. So this is a, if you want to do a level spoon, that's a level spoon. Now, if, if a recipe calls for a heaping spoon, that would be like that, right? Look at that. That's like a heaping. Look at that. It's heap. The word heaping means huge. You know, a heaping. Well, let's just add some level. Let's add a couple of level spoons of baking powder. All right. Let's be a little bit rebellious and add a third spoon. Oh, all right. So we added, now we're, we're adding the dry ingredients, right? We had our wet ingredients. That's kind of finished. Now we're doing the dry ingredients. Um, all right. Let's add, uh, let's add a bit of salt. Look at that. Got our sea salt here, add a little bit of salt. Let's add one teaspoon of salt. You know, very often recipes will call for a teaspoon. I don't know why it's always a teaspoon. Some recipes might call for half a teaspoon. It's usually not much. It's just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of flavor, right? And let's, did I get all my ingredients out here? Yeah, I think uh, let's, now we're just gonna add the flour. Now guys, um, Let's sift the flour. Look at this. This is my flour, right? This is all-purpose flour. You can use it for any purposes. We're going to use it for the purpose of baking cookies. Now, guys, let's sift in the flour. Okay? To sift. Sift is a verb. This is called a sieve. Okay, a sieve, you need a sieve to sift something. So we're gonna sift in the flour. 
Now, why are we going to do that? Because we want to make sure that there are no weevils in our cookies. Right? Sometimes in flour there are weevils. A weevil is a little insect that likes to live in flour. Have you ever had weevils in your flour? Let me know down in the comments. I have had weevils. Most of the time here in Canada there's no, no weevils in the flour, but you never know, right? So we're gonna get our one cup measure and uh, we're gonna sift in, let's put in four cups of flour. All right, so there's a kind of a level cup, right? So one, there's one cup. Let's sift that in. See if there are any weevils. All right, no weevils. Look at that. Not a single weevil. <laughs> That's good news. You know, maybe we should just uh, just mix this in a little bit so it's not all at one time. All right. Now this is looking great. I think my future wife is going to be so happy about this. Okay, let's add the rest of our flour here. Let's add in another couple of couple of cups. Oh, there's a heaping cup. That's not a level cup. That's a heaping cup of flour. All right, we're just gonna sift that in as well. Sometimes a recipe will say sift together the dry ingredients. So you're supposed to kind of sift to get sift like the um, flour, the baking powder, the salt, you know, that they might use the, the phrasal verb sift together or to, you know, that means to kind of to mix it together, right? So let's add another couple of cups here. And, uh, boy, that's a, that's a lot. It's a lot of flour. It's going to fill up this bowl really nicely. Okay, so we're sifting. Sifting our flour. And uh, that's it, guys. I think we've got all our ingredients. We've got butter, eggs. What else would we want to put into a cookies? Those are kind of the basic ingredients for any kind of... Uh, recipe, you know, cake or cookies, they're all kind of use the same ingredients. So we're just gonna beat this until it's kind of a nice thick texture for our cookies. I think my beaters are struggling. It's a very thick, kind of a thick dough. Hope my Look, look at that, look how thick that is, guys. Mmm. <laughs> it tastes good. I can taste the vanilla in there. All right, let's beat this. Good guy. <laughs> well, my dough that's escaping, I'm gonna punish this dough by eating it if it tries to escape. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is called a measuring bowl. Okay, so very often a recipe will say mix, you know, get a get a a large bowl or like a, a mixing bowl. Oh, sorry, that's what it's called, a mixing bowl, not a measuring bowl. The reason I was thought about the word measuring is because See, it's got the numbers on the side here. Half a liter or a pint or whatever. It's got the different measurements here. It's called a mixing bowl. Okay, because I'm mixing it right now, right? I'm beating together all the ingredients to make a, a nice dough for our cookies. All right? So I think we're almost done here, guys. It's looking pretty good. It's tasting excellent. Man, I wish you could taste some. All right, look how thick that is, guys. You need this, you know, we, we want some thick dough.
for making these kinds of cookies like with a that we're going to use cookie cutters on so that we'll be able to see what the writing is on the on the cookies right actually this might not even be thick enough I don't know I've never baked cookies like this before so kind of making it up on the fly okay is that thick enough wow look how thick that is how do I get it off from in there guys what do you think of my baking skills my uh my professional baker all right so we're just gonna get it out from there should I lick off the beaters man this is so exciting I don't know if this is thick enough guys because to make these make the cookies we're gonna use cookie cutters okay these kinds of these kinds of things are called cookie cutters we're gonna use cookie cutters but um, I'm just thinking maybe that's not thick enough yeah you know what it's not gonna work with the cookie cutters we need some more flour in there so I'm just gonna dump some more flour Let's see if that'll be a little bit better I don't think my recipe is working very well I should have used your recipe instead of my recipe. This is the Mark recipe for Christmas cookies. It's almost Christmas time. Merry Christmas to all my wonderful fans and, and viewers. Maybe we should knead this by hand. Do you know what it means to knead? If you have some dough and you knead it, if like you're baking bread, usually we don't knead cookie dough, but if you're baking bread, then you knead it, right? It's spelled K with a K. It's not like the other kind of knead, like I need. I need your love. I need you to smash like, right? It's not that kind of knead. It's with a K, which is a bit weird. Guys, there's cookie dough all over my floor. Too bad I don't have a pet, like a cat, to go eating all my cookie dough. Man, that's so good, guys. Hope I don't get salmonella from the raw eggs. Do you eat raw eggs? Let me know down in the comments if you eat raw eggs. Raw eggs are great, especially in cookie dough. Okay, at least I like it. But let me know, I might get salmonella, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert. I'm an eating expert. I'm not a disease control expert. We're gonna clean off our cooking surface. All right. I think it'll be good for good enough for the dough. Now we're gonna let's put down some flour. Okay, to put down means like this. Okay, we're put, putting down some flour. Right, we're gonna sprinkle some flour on the table just to so that the dough doesn't stick to the table. Look at that nice flour on the table. Put a lot of it down. Okay, now we're gonna take a bunch of dough. Let's eject the beaters okay to eject means to kind of take them out right so there we got our beaters full of dough come on get out of there okay <clears throat> mm. i'm licking the beaters all right we're just gonna get the dough out of here put it on our working surface on our surface, right? Any kind of a, when you cook something or when you bake something, you need a surface to work with, right? So this is our surface. We've just, um, man, that's good guys. Let's just eat it raw. Have you ever just been cooking and then you just decided to start eating everything raw? Okay. So we got our dough here. Let's grab a little bit more dough. And now we're gonna use a rolling pin Let's add a little bit more flour, guys. <clears throat> guys, let me just check if I'm still recording. Sometimes my phone, sometimes I get a bit nervous. Oh yeah, I'm still recording. I'm recording, I record these cooking videos on my, guys, I just stepped on some dough. <laughs> I stepped down and felt the dough squish under my sandal. So it's a good thing we're still recording. 
And uh, all right, we're gonna get our rolling pin. This, my friends, is called a rolling pin. So we're gonna roll out the dough. Now, we don't wanna roll it too thin, actually, because for our cookies, I don't know, we want it about, uh, I'd say maybe about that thick, maybe about a quarter inch thick, half an inch thick. So, we're just gonna roll it here. Oh. It's looking a little bit flaky now with the uh, with the extra flour that I put in there. All right, so that's what it means to knead. If you kind of go like that with the dough, you're kneading the dough. All right, so got it all down there, and we're just going to roll it out a little bit more here, and then we are going to use our cookie cutters. <clears throat> Oh, it's sticking to the rolling pin. Got to add a little bit more flour on here. All right, so we're gonna roll it out like that. Ooh, all right. Man, this is exciting, guys. All right. Now we're gonna use our cookie cutters to cut, uh, you know, to, to just uh, cut out the cookies. Can you see that in my camera here? I'm not sure. If you can see that okay but uh, here we go just got one of the cookies I'll try to show that to you here there we go look at that my friends how can I show it to you there look at that maybe you can hold it up a little bit better so you can see it says stop talking all right so this is the most important one I would say now, the other ones, this one says stop talking. This one says, please go die. Let's use one of these. Let's, uh, let's make a please go die cookie here. All right. <clears throat> Come on, get out of there. All right, there it is. Guys, please go die and this one says I hope you choke right? I hope you choke do you know what choke means choke means if you uh, like this you can't breathe right because some someone's either choking you like that's called strangling right? if someone tries to kill you like that it's called strangling but if you choke, that means you swallowed something, but it went down the wrong tube, right? So in your throat, you have two pipes, all right? This front one is called your windpipe. When you breathe in and out, air passes through here, but the one behind it is called the esophagus, the esophagus, all right? So when you eat something or when you swallow, it goes down the back one, it goes down your esophagus. Well, sometimes if you eat something and it goes down the front one, it blocks your windpipe and you can't breathe. Hurry, right, that's called choking. Choking, have you ever choked on something? It's uh, not a good, good thing, you know? Then you need someone to perform the, um, the Heimlich maneuver, it's called the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah, where you grab someone, you go, Right? You go behind someone, you grab someone like from their stomach and you just to like force them to eject whatever was in their throat. I think it's called the Heimlich maneuver. Okay, so let's make this one, which is, I hope you choke. Right? <clears throat> All right, there it is. I hope you choke. Now, I was looking for one that said, go to hell, but I couldn't find any, so this is close enough. Please go die, all right? So we got this one, stop talking. We got this one, please go die. And this one, I hope you choke. So guys, these are the cookies I decided to make for my future wife. Smash like if you think this is a great idea. I really hope she likes these cookies. 
And um, so, you know what, before we keep doing this, let's get our cookie sheet. You can call this like a pan, a cookie sheet. It's called, yeah, like a, what does it say on here? Hmm, it doesn't say it on here, what it's called, but we call it a, a cookie sheet. Okay, so get your cookie sheet. Now, one of the problems with putting cookies right on the cookie sheet is sometimes they stick on there, right? So there are a couple of options. You can, you can grease the pan, right, or grease the cookie sheet with like oil or with um, some kind of a spray, like um, a non-stick spray. But another way you can do it is you can use parchment paper. All right, so look at this. It says, uh, where's the English side? Most products in Canada have English and French. Okay, so there it says parchment, parchment paper. Parchment paper, right? So we're gonna put some parchment paper uh, into the cookie sheet just to uh, prevent it from sticking, right? All right. Okay, guys, look at that. Now we're gonna put our cookies on there so that they don't stick. Isn't that exciting? I'll just move this out of the way so you can see me a little bit better, all right? Okay, man, this is so exciting, guys. Let me know, what do you think about these? Which one do you think I should make the most of? Stop talking, I hope you choke, or please go die. Guys, I think my dough is still a little bit sticky. You can see it's, uh, see, I just tried to make it and it's, let's just bunch that one up, that didn't work. Let's try again. Come on, turn out. I really want these cookies to turn out to make my wife happy. Come on. Man, guys, it's too sticky. No, well, it's kind of worked. Just a little bit messed up. All right, let's make one more stop talking and then I'll make please go die. All right, here we go. Oh, guys, I messed that one up too. This is not working very well. I need some encouragement. Give me some encouragement, guys. Oh, that one didn't turn out. Guys, I'm just gonna bunch up, maybe th maybe this side here was gonna work a little bit better. Maybe that's where all the flour is. Come on, get out of there. It's not coming out. Oh, that kind of worked. Look at that, it's kind of, it's kind of all right. But I think what I need to do, guys, is just to bunch it up and add a little bit more flour. That's the key. It's still a little bit too sticky. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna add some of this flour from around here, and uh, sprinkle a little bit more flour on here. All right, there we go. That's gonna be much better. Just gonna mix that all together. Okay. Let me know what kind of cookies are your favorite cookies, guys. Do you like chocolate chip cookies? You know, um, what other kinds of cookies are there? Ginger snap? Ooh, ginger snap cookies are awesome. Um, I really like all kinds of cookies, to be honest. So these kind of cookies that I'm making now, they, they can be called sugar cookies. They're just very easy. Cookies, uh, just just kind of sugar and flour, right, and uh, some other basic ingredients. They're very easy cookies to make. So I'm just gonna put down a little bit of. Uh, let's get the beaters out of the way. Put down a little bit more flour here, and uh, there we go. Have you guys learned any English yet? Any English words? Hopefully, let me know down in the comments which words. Oh, I forgot to add these bits to there. Let me know which words you've learned in this lesson so far. I just wanted to hang out with you guys today. 
make some cookies for my future wife that I haven't met yet. Have you met your future spouse yet? I don't know, maybe I have met her. Maybe I just don't realize it. Are you married? Do you have a future wife in store? Are you hoping to find a future wife or husband? Let me know your goals down there in the comments. Maybe you have a relationship goal for 2021. That is, uh, to find a relation. Wait, is it 2000? 2021's almost over, guys. It's almost 2022. Let me know if you have a, a goal to find a relationship in 2022. Maybe you're in a relationship already. Okay, so let's see if this is any better. Let's see here. Come on, I hope it's better. Here we go. Ah, oh, I think it's a little bit better. <laughs> I think it's a bit better. Anyway, we're going to put it in there. Okay, let's try another one. Maybe it's a bit too thick. Maybe I need to uh, roll the dough a little bit thinner just to get the... Uh... Let's try that. Let's try a little bit thinner dough. I'm just worried that's a little bit too thin. It won't give a proper imprint. Oh, actually, that's okay. Yeah, that actually works maybe a bit better. See that? Stop talking. All right. Yeah, I think actually it's just better if it's just a little bit thinner than I had it. Okay, this is going to be all right, guys. Now we're going to be able to... Let's do a please go die. Yeah, there we go. That's the secret, guys. A little bit more flour and a little bit thinner so it doesn't have to kind of squish all the way down. Let's, now let's make a... I hope you choke. Oh, look at that. That's perfect, guys. I hope you choke. I hope... I don't hope you choke. These cookies are for my future wife, remember. They're not for you. All right, so um, let's just finish this off, and then I'll pop those in the oven. And while those are baking, guys, um, I'm going to get ready for my next video, which is where we're going to put some icing on the cookies all right so this one is just making the cookie recipe the next one will be um oh that's so perfect guys look at that that is so perfect i gotta take a picture just pull out my phone and take a picture of that that is gorgeous wow this is gonna be amazing guys i can't wait to eat these cookies let's just make another one i hope you choke and uh, let's put another one. Stop talking. And you know, guys, I think I've, I've uh, finished teaching you everything I need to teach you with vo the vocabulary. So we're going to pop them in the, in the oven for about seven minutes, maybe ten minutes, just to, till they kind of get a little bit, you know, nice and, nice and baked, I guess. We'll see. I'll take them out after seven minutes. I'll see if they're, they're, they're the right texture or the right yeah the right consistency maybe and uh, we'll see how it goes and then in my next video we will make some icing and we'll put some icing on the cookies so guys thank you so much for joining me here's a beater you can lick the beater off isn't that awesome and um uh, well i'll see you back here in a few a few minutes um Whenever I upload these videos, maybe it'll be the next day. But guys, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Let me know what you think of my cookies. Down there, next episode, I'll be taking them out of the oven and then we're going to ice, we're going to put icing on the cookies. So I'm super excited about that, guys. Thank you again. I love you so much. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys over in the next episode of English Cooking.